The title of the message is Christian life without love is a religious burden. If there is no love in a Christian's life, he is no different than from any other religious person who is trying to somehow make sense of his life or her life. It's a burden, it's a struggle. Someone may go to temple hoping to be forgiven, someone may go to mosque, someone may go to the uh, monastery, someone may go to the mountains or the rivers, or someone may worship this or that. Therefore, if there is no divine love in the hearts of a Christian, he is no different than from any other religious person in this world. And uh, this love that separates man, uh, believers from the non-believer is so essential for us to understand that we, if we have love, we are motivated by love and if we have no love, then we are motivated by fear. Fear of man, fear of what other people may say, fear of God, fear of hell, fear of Satan, fear of sickness, disease, poverty, fear of the known things. For no reason, we may be simply afraid in life. A person who is not filled with the love of God is mostly motivated by fear. What will happen to me if I don't do this? What will happen to me if I don't go to church? What will happen to me if I don't do this religious activity? So, a Christian without love is carrying a religious burden. And he is mostly motivated by fear of the other people's opinion. And because of this fear, the fearful thing is that whatever we fear, it turns to be true. Whatever I might be afraid of will come to be true. That's what the greatest, uh, the, uh, one of the greatest men in the Bible, Job, he was a righteous man, he was a godly man. But at the end of his life, he says, whatever I have feared has happened to me. His only fear was that somehow his children may sin against God and the the, the wrath of God may come upon and that is what exactly happened. So when we are motivated by fear, we attract the calamities and the catastrophes in our life. And because of that, we become paralyzed. We cannot do anything. We are afraid of failure. We are afraid of people. We are afraid of circumstances. And as a result, we cannot move. And because we cannot take risk in life, we are not daring. We take our joy, our peace, our prosperity, our contentment, and all the possibilities that we have in our life with us to the grave. A fearful person can never achieve anything in life. In the same way, religious activities also, if it is motivated by fear or terror or worry or anxiety, then it becomes a terrible burden to bear in life. On the other hand, if we are motivated by love, it liberates us, it gives us freedom. We are free from the fear of people. We don't care what other people say. We don't care what other people think about us. We do what God tells us to do. We live the way God wants us to live. And it, it makes us, when you are a free human being, you become a very beautiful person. If you're not afraid of people, if you're not afraid of the known things, if you're not guarding yourself against something, then you become a very loving and kind and beautiful person. You become hospitable. People like to come around you. And because you become a beautiful and hospitable and a kind person, you become successful. Dale Carnegie wrote a book many, many, many years ago. And it book says, How to Win Friend and Be Successful. A successful person is one who is free from the fear of people, who is free from the fear of negativity and catastrophe, who is not afraid of what will happen if he takes the risky steps and because of that he becomes a successful and sometime he ends up becoming a perfect human being as supposed to be in the plan of God. Love has the power to liberate us and not only that, it creates self-respect and satisfaction. 
if a person is filled with the love of god if a person is filled with love for god love for other human being love for himself or herself that person is self respecting person and because he is a self respecting person he is fully satisfied in life he is not greedy he is not jealous he is not envious he if possible he or she wants to be always helpful and kind and hospitable to other people because of that that person enjoys satisfaction in life even if tomorrow the person has to die the doctor says you have only a few days to live that person will die in full satisfaction and contentment and not only that if a person has love in the heart if a person has received love and is able to give love that prevents from mental and spiritual sicknesses and in fact the cure for spiritual and mental sickness is also love therefore i say this is happening because man was created for love not for fear it was loving relationship with god fear came when man broke that relationship with god the first thing that came to man was fear and sin uh, sorry uh, shame when he committed sin adam was afraid of god and he was ashamed so we are not created to live in fear or shame we are created in love and when we create when we live in love what happens god for god has not given us a spirit of fear but one of power love and sound mind because we are not created to live in fear god did not abandon us in fear adam was afraid of god eve was afraid of god man was afraid of god ashamed of god but god loved man so much that he did not leave him in the spirit of fear so through jesus christ god has removed the spirit of fear the bible says there is no fear in love perfect love casts out fear if there is a spirit of fear in me then when i come to jesus christ i experience the love of god and that divine love of god expels fear out of my life and therefore god did not give us the spirit of fear but he gave us the spirit of power power to expel fear out of our life power to be free from the fear of man power to be free from the fear of future power to be free from the fear of the devil or sickness or poverty whatever the fear there is fear is a very terrible thing a real thing many people don't even know that they are driven by fear for example when i was a little boy maybe 9 10 years old i remember how i used to be so afraid of people for no reason from my home to go to school it, it took about hour and a half so and we had to go through mountains and cross the river and all and i was the only child walking from that village to the school and in the mountain you could see from one mountain to the other mountain if someone is coming you can see from a far away so when i see someone coming from the other side i used to be terrified for no reason and i used to hide in the bush and let that person pass by and then walk it it is a terrifying thing to be afraid of human beings and i used to be terrified by uh, uh, alone in the night if i was alone at home and no one and the darkness comes i would be terrified i had a terrifying nightmare for many many years until i came to christ yet when i came to christ that fear of man disappeared the nightmare disappeared and every night i used to have that what do you call choking and i'll be shouting and trying to, someone would try to kill me or someone tried to uh, strangle me to death or shoot me or some terrible thing would happen but when i came to christ god took away the spirit of fear out of my life gave me the spirit of power to overcome those things and then he gave me the spirit of love finally i was able to see human being as human being before than that every human being used to look like a demon to me but the spirit of god gave me the love to love human being i gave my life to serve human being by serving christ because of the 
spirit of sound judgment in other translation the spirit of self control the sound judgment or the self control is it, that you are able to think right and make a right decision whether to do this or to do that you are able to choose right thing because god has given us the spirit of love and self control or a sound mind or sound judgment so that we can overcome the spirit of fear and not only that we can overcome the spirit of fear we can overcome ourselves you know the greatest enemy is not somebody else our greatest enemy is ourself jordan peterson a famous uh, canadian philosopher and a scientist uh, psychologist of this time he says when you are terribly suffering and find out the cause of your suffering is yourself that is hell the worst hell is the one in which you are suffering and so much you are suffering but found out the reason of your suffering is yourself and that is the worst kind of hell to be in so god has given us power to overcome the worst enemy ourselves that is the lust of the flesh the lust of eyes and the pride of life that always dominates us and separates us from god separates us from the love of god and when we are driven by the lust of the flesh we are driven by the lust of eye and driven by the pride of life we allow the spirit of fear to control us and the spirit of love is not working anymore but god gave us the spirit of power and sound mind so that we can exercise the spirit of love over ourselves why do we need this kind of love because first peter 4 7 and 8 says love covers multitudes of sin now this multitude of sin is not only the sins of other people though it is what peter is telling it is your own sins we not only have to forgive others we have to forgive ourselves also and in order to forgive ourselves we have to accept and understand and acknowledge the forgiveness god has given to us so peter says the end of all things is near that means we are living in the end of days therefore be alert and sober minded this is again sound minded think carefully for prayer if you don't have a sound mind if you don't have a spirit of self control if you don't have the spirit of love and you are driven by the spirit of fear you cannot pray your prayer is also meaningless it's a kind of a witchcraft prayer you want to pray against someone you want to you want to see someone else destroyed instead of praying for other people helping other people so be careful how you pray above all maintain constant love for one another if your prayer has to be effective you have to be filled with the spirit of love for one another how since love covers multitude of sins if you have to forgive someone you cannot forgive if you do not have the spirit of love so a christian without love is no better than a a terrorist who is killing other people in the name of god a christian without love is no different than a sadhu or a, a who is trying to sacrifice his hand or leg or something somehow they want to attain the favor of god by sacrificing themselves but a christian filled with the love of god knows god has covered his or her multitude of sins how because christ died for us while we were still sinners he forgave all my sins therefore i have to forgive myself yeah every time we look into our own heart the closer we go to god the greater the sinfulness we know the only remedy is to know oh god you have covered multitude of my sin i thank you therefore if someone is sinning against me instead of becoming resentful judgmental vengeful i want to take revenge i say i forgive that person god you forgave multitude of my sins how can i not forgive the parable of the unmerciful servant 
one servant was forgiven by the master 10000 gold pieces and then he goes and puts a servant fellow servant into prison who had not been able to pay him 100 piece of silver and when the master came to know that this person whom i forgave 1000 piece of gold could not forgive 100 piece of gold he brings him back into prison and say until you pay you will be handed over to the tormentors and jesus said this is exactly how your father will deal with you if you don't forgive those who come against you those who sin against you so a christian with the love of god in the heart can easily forgive other human beings he can seek and be loving person towards those who come against who hurt who are enemy love covers multitude of sins not only that jesus has not only taken away the spirit of fear he has given us this spirit of fear how how did we get this we cannot love ourselves human beings are not capable of loving other people in a way god wants he has given us that love from himself romans 55 this hope will not disappoint us because god's love has been poured out into our hearts through the holy spirit who was given to us if we want to be different than other human beings if we want to be like christ then we have to accept the divine love of god that has been given to us we have to go to god and say lord this person has hurt me so badly i cannot forgive that person so lord i pray give me the agape the divine love by your holy spirit because your word says you've given us this divine love so a person who wants to become a loving person who wants to be free person who want to be who wants to be joyful Uh, pleasing in the eyes of others and always kind and hospitable knows this secret of divine love given by the holy spirit you cannot love your enemy by your own strength if you do that becomes self righteous you will be so ah i forgave that that person was very wicked i forgave i am a very good person that's a self righteousness that is pride but when you know that my sins have been washed away by the blood of jesus christ and not only that he has given me the spirit of love how by the power of the holy spirit in my heart therefore if i am able to forgive my uh, enemies that is because of the grace and the mercy of god that is because the love of god has been given to me it is not my love it is the love of the holy spirit it is the love of christ it is the love of god if you don't have the active operating power of the holy spirit working in your heart you cannot love fellow human beings if you do you become self righteous so this love has to come from god and we have to ask him if you don't have we have this lord fill me with your love pour out your love into my hearts lord more and more than i have been able to experience so far because if you have no love in your heart you are not a disciple of christ you see in guwahati many churches are having problem all the time because christians do not operate here in love they operate here in language or tribal culture or my people or your people or self centeredness and because of that uh, there are too many Uh, small small church is not getting along with and even in the church of the christians cannot l- love each other they cannot forgive each other because they are not driven by the love of god they may be christian by name that is their religious burden but they are not true disciples of jesus christ if you have no love you are not a disciple of christ that is absolutely biblical evidence of being a disciple is to have the love of god love is the evidence of our disciples of how john 13 34 35 i give you a new command love one another just as i have loved you you are also to love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another 15 12 and 17 this is my command love one another as i have loved you this is what i command you 
love one another and in the gospel of john many time this is repeated in the in john's letter also it is many time repeated love one another love one another and when you read these verses when you hear these verses and if it doesn't touch you if it doesn't prick you then you're not a disciple you may be a religious person you may be carrying a religious burden oh i have to go to church or i have to do this and i have to do that you are no different than a hindu or a muslim or a buddhist you will only be disciple of jesus christ if you have genuine love for fellow human beings without the genuine love for fellow human being you cannot claim to be the disciple of jesus christ because this is the only evidence in john chapter 17 verse 20 to 24 if you read jesus said if you love one another and come together to worship the whole world will come to know because you become my witness so you want to be a disciple of jesus christ you have to be a loving person when you become a loving person not only you manifest the glory of god uh, from your face you become a beautiful human being you become kind and compassionate whether at home or in the church in your workplace or with your friend wherever we go we become like christ christ likeness is only defined by the love of god because god has given us this spirit so that we become his weakness because the reason i am saying this without the love of god in your heart for fellow human being you cannot claim to be a disciple of christ because faith without love is dead it's useless james in this way says james chapter 2 verse 14 to 26 but i will read few verses here what good is it my brothers and sisters if someone claims to have faith but does not have works can such faith save him if a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food and one of you says to them go in peace stay warm and be well fed but you don't give them what the body needs what good is it in the same way if it does not have works faith in the same way if it does not have work is dead by itself verse 20 senseless person this translation says sense some places fool you fool are you willing to learn or do you want to see that faith without work is useless or dead and he gives the evidence in verse 26 for just as the body without the spirit is dead so also faith without works is dead faith without works is dead now that what kind of work here he is talking about in example of a work someone is so desperately in need and you oh go have a good food you must be hungry and today is very cold and wear warm clothes don't stay in cold but you give nothing you are simply wishing him but you are doing nothing that means that kind of faith is dead and same thing paul says in galatians chapter 5 verse 6 for in christ jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision this is religious activity whether you come to church or not come to church whether you are christian or hindu or muslim it doesn't matter in christ what matters is what matter is faith working through love faith working through love James says faith without work is dead Paul says faith without love is dead in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that is the chapter of love where Paul says in the name of faith i may burn my body and offer as a living sacrifice and if i have no love it is useless so my friends brothers and sisters if you have no love you are not a disciple you cannot say i am a disciple of jesus christ because faith without love cannot save you cannot make any difference in your life and why many churches are not doing well because christians are dead their faith is dead faith they have no works they have no love and if you have no love for fellow human beings you cannot claim to be the disciple of jesus christ john would continue to say in first john if you claim to be in the light if you walk in the light if you have fellowship with one another 
if you love one another then only the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all our sins so christian life without love is a burden is a nightmare is a waste on the other hand if you are having faith and love you have faith and love in your heart god fulfills the desires of your heart god grants the desires of the person who lives in love and faith in first john 3:21 to 23 dear friends if our hearts don't condemn us that is when you know that you have the love of god in your heart you love god you love fellow human being you love yourself you're free from fear and that's the lack of condemnation no condemnation you are so free we have confidence before god and receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight here faith and work faith and work now what is this work verse 23 now this is his command that we believe in the name of his son that is faith jesus christ and love one another as he commands this is work loving one another is the work believe in the lord jesus christ is faith so when we have faith and love together god answers your prayer he gives the desires of your heart you become a beautiful powerful loving person and wherever you go you bring the aroma of life in jesus christ wherever we go we introduce the life giving message of jesus christ people want to know what is so special about us but if we have no love life is so miserable so terrible we may think i am a christian i go to church i am praying i am fasting but i have been hating someone constantly i cannot forgive that person i cannot live in peace with that person and i ho- at home is the same situation then what happens is you are simply putting yourself under a religious burden and religion cannot give you the freedom religion cannot give you love religion cannot give you sound mind and and self control and as a result life is simply a waste love liberates us fear paralyzes us and love is the only evidence that you and i are disciples of jesus christ so let us ask a question who is keeping me away from being a loving person don't say what it is always who it's a problem with some person either in childhood or in many years ago or currently there is someone somewhere something that happened between you there is a broken relationship and that person may have been gone maybe dead and gone may have forgotten may have forgiven you he may or she may be enjoying a good life but you may still be a prisoner of hate or resentment or lack of love and because of that you may be in prison who is keeping you from being a loving person let that person go from your heart and ask jesus to give you the spirit of love and ask the holy spirit to pour out his divine love in your heart so that you can be forgiving person you can be loving person kind person hospitable person always willing to lend a helping hand to those who are in need when you do that without realizing god will start fulfilling your desires he will meet your need he will take care of you long before you ask god knows what you need and he will supply whatever you need because a loving person that is filled with faith everything is possible for him who believes amen let us pray for a moment